if I wanted to go and be a bus driver, I think I should have the right to apply, and if I can drive a bus, be able to drive it. Women to this day do not seem to realize just how free they are compared with men. In 1970, 18-year-old men in America were being drafted for the Vietnam War. Women, suffering under overbearing oppression, were exempt. We find this time and again with women's view of oppression in the past and up to the present day. They'll ignore the overwhelmingly more common and more severe examples of male oppression all around them and focus only on their own troubles. So this woman moans about her opportunities to drive a bus, but has no capacity to appreciate the real oppression of men being forced to fight and die. In today's world, business sees even more money to be made from the stupidity of women. It's made them dissatisfied with their current level of slavery and has made them demand more. So we have the pay gap myth, bogus sexual harassment claims and the glass ceiling myth. All these are created and hugely exaggerated to make women angry and feel like they aren't getting enough in the workplace. We also need to hold on to equal pay. Women work for 76 cents on the dollar for the same work that men do. That's not right in America. Lane Day is suing for sex discrimination and unfair dismissal. How did this happen? How have women fallen for such a blatant contract? You see, the first rule of the con... Is you can't cheat an honest man. It's never been done. Can't happen. Impossible. The only way this thing works is if you want something for nothing. So what do we do? Well, we give you nothing for something. The, the greed. It's women's greed that has fueled feminism. The architects of feminism knew they could count on the stupidity and greed of women their desire to have it all. Feminism promised women what they've always wanted. It promised them everything. It promised freedom and choice and happiness. But it's delivered none of it. But it was easy to see from the start that it could never deliver what women wanted. It could only deliver what business and government wanted. Women in the workplace, like men. Humanity needed strength and wisdom in women to fight off the siren song of feminism. It was up to women to see through the charade. It wasn't a fight that men could take on. No one could force women to abandon the needs of family and go to work. Not government, not business, not anyone. It was up to women to reject feminism, or have it take over all of our lives. Unfortunately, women chose not to fight it, but instead embraced it. Through feminism, women truly believed that they could have it all. Like children in a toy shop, they thought feminism was giving them all these new goodies, new rights, new powers, new freedoms, new opportunities, when in fact, all they were getting were chains. How can it be possible for something that's not good for society to be pushed by radical feminists? It all kicked off in the 70s with the Equal Opportunities Commission. Um, what you had there was a commission set up um, which was designed, although it said it was equality for all, for all it was designed really to enable women to achieve equality. Um, I had a person say to me, a solicitor said to me about three or four years ago that women can really organise themselves well and I said no, they're not any more better organised than men. I said, quite simply, when you've got a commission there which is set up for the benefit of women's equality, in inverted commas, uh, whereby the, anything that a woman screams about, she can call upon a whole phalanx of lawyers from the EOC who will push their case, um, it, there's no great difficulty in achieving that. So what you've had from the 70s, um, and as they, you should see it in the newspapers, sort of year after year, another male bastion crumbles and you get this silly headline news would come out that women had achieved this and had achieved that. Quite simply, you had a commission that was there exclusively at their use to push for whatever they wanted to achieve. And then, of course, you had politicians always hungry for a vote. Uh, and what better vote to have than a woman's vote um, if they can promise them a whole list of goodies? I mean, the Labour Party, if you think about it now, um, because of the benefits that they pushed in the way of single mothers, have got the single mother vote in their pocket. It keeps them in power. So if a politician can get power through pushing a certain line of action and they simply keep power, because that's all it's about, um, then they're doing it, and that's why we are as we are. Do you think that women are subjugated in society? Um, to some extent, they're subjugated, um, usually by other women, though. The women at work... As I say, it's, 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 a, it's a female dominated workplace, and the women at work, um, so I've talked to some of them, and there is, they're very young, and as they get older, there is an issue that other women put on them about starting a family and having children. And so it goes either way. You either, they can either start a family, but it means they can't work. If they're working, 
it means that they're cold career orientated women and they can't start and they can't you know they don't want to start a family um so they get kind of they get hit on both sides but the people doing the hitting are other women I've never, I've never seen a, a man come up with the, with the kind of, you know, why are you becoming a, a, a housewife? You could be going further in your career. You're selling out. <laughs> no man's ever said that to a woman. I think the opportunities need to be there for them, but I think they need to be left to their own devices. And if, like, as in case my daughter, when she had her first child, all of her friends, well, oh, you're going back to work, are you? And then she said, well, no, I, I'm going to stay at home and look after them. Oh, you've got to go out. So it's that peer pressure was there to make her go back to work, and it shouldn't be there. The grasping, greedy and infantile nature of women, their almost infinite self-interest, and their genuine belief in their moral superiority over men has ensured that feminism is a roaring success, to the detriment of us all.